Hi, hello Lana. Uh, welcome once again to Lana's Coach. So today we are going to look at uh, how the computer processor works, commonly referred to as the CPU, Central Processing Unit. So basically this is a, a chip that is found within the computer motherboard, right? Uh, it, is, it has the capability of interpreting and executing program instructions that come out maybe uh, from the input, output, and also how it can store them within the storage uh, devices. So normally, for those who don't know how it looks like, uh, there's a diagram here. Of course, this is a, an old version of a processor, but ideally it's an inbuilt chip that you can always find within uh, the motherboard. So a central processing unit or a processor has different compartments yeah, that gives it some functionality. Like it has the main memory where it stores frequently or other instructions that is sent to it. It also has the AU arithmetic unit that has the capability of adding, I mean subtracting numbers. It also has the logic unit. Yeah? So logic unit part of the CPU carries out the functionality of comparison where we use stuff such as greater than, less than, right? And of course it has also the control unit. Now this control unit has the capability of managing the instructions from the input devices all the way to output <coughs> devices sorry and of course you have the cache memory now cache memory unlike the main memory it stores frequently accessed instructions so rather than the cpu fetching the instructions all the way from main memory it can always fetch them from the cache memory within a short uh, time so now that you have talked about all these so registers, as you can say, are special purpose temporary storage units, yeah, which are high-speed memory locations used for holding instructions, data, and intermediate results that are currently being uh, processed. So let's not for uh, fetch stuff here. Uh, instructions are basically a simple thing, such as uh, clicking on a mouse or tapping on a keyboard, right? We also have main, mem main memory, as I indicated, Normally, it's referred to as the working area of the computer. Yeah, People know it as RAM or random access memory. And of course, you have mentioned about the arithmetic unit, which carries out operations such as addition, subtractions, multiplications, or division. I've also mentioned the logic unit. It's for comparison purposes. And of course, control unit, as the name suggests, uh, performs functions of controlling the flow of data information from input devices all the way to output devices and of course cache memory as i mentioned uh, this is where we store frequently accessed data right so what are some of the key phases that is actually carried out during uh, the processing yeah so the main operations include number one fetching instructions from the main memory now that you have seen what main memory is the cpu uh, actually captures or fetches instructions that are already stored within the RAM. Yeah. After it has fetched this particular instruction, it then decodes them. Yeah. Decoding means that it has to understand the kind of instructions that is to be processed. Like for instance, it has to decode to understand whether it's a video file being played or it's an audio file or someone is downloading file from the internet and so on. Right? It can only execute an instructions after it has decoded it. So the third step or phase is to execute the coded, the decoded uh, instructions. Thereafter, it can decide whether to display this particular instru uh, executed instructions or store them, right? So the fourth uh, phase is storing the results, right? Now, in all these operations, there must be some kind of communications between the various uh, compartments of the CPU like you have seen communication between the main memory maybe to the control unit and so on right so we have two categories of internal communications that happens one is the processor to memory communication the second one is processor to in, uh, to input output device communication we should be reminded that when a processor wants to fetch instructions from the main memory there must be some kind of communication and that's what is achieved by number one 
At number two, the processor also needs to understand which is this inst where these particular instructions come from, which kind of input devices is actually sending these particular instructions. And of course, where do they or how does the processor display or store these particular instructions, the output uh, devices, right? And also we have the processor to memory communication. Now, as the communication happens between memory, we have two common types of register. Yeah? how it stores and fetches these particular instructions. So we have the storage referred to as memory address register, and of course we have the memory buffer register. Now, this is how the processor reads and writes, yeah, as it captures or fetches the instructions, right? So it needs to give this particular instruction some kind of allocations. These allocations, they need to be labeled, right? So that as it fetches the instructions, it knows where these particular instructions are stored. And that's what we refer to as the memory address register. As it processes these particular instructions, they need to be uh, executed in a fast in, fast out, or uh, it needs to be executed in some kind of manner. So the CPU has to store them in a buffer register so that the instructions that was actually uh, decoded first is the one to be executed first. So these read-write operations are very crucial when you are performing processor to memory uh, communication. And of course we have seen that the other form of communication between is between the processor and the I.O. devices. So this actually has some kind of interfaces. Interface between the inter input and the processor and of course interface between the processor and the device communication. And that's where we have the control unit. The control unit now uh, sits at the center of the I.O. communication with the processor. So it controls the instruction from the input devices and ensures that they are displayed or stored in the right output uh, devices. So as, we, as the processor handles this set of instructions, it goes through some kind of full cycle. This full cycle is what we refer to as the fetch execute cycle. But before we talk about the fetch execute cycle, we need to understand the first initial cycle that it undertakes. We, all, we are all aware that the computer doesn't understand those characters that we type within the keyboard. So that means it has to convert them into some language that it understands. This language is what we refer to as the machine language. So for it to process these particular instru instructions effectively, it has to convert all these forms of characters into uh, ones and zeros, right? So after that, now it starts uh, actually undertaking the fetch execute instruction. We have already looked at this. So it fetches the instructions of the main memory, then breaks them down to uh, some kind of language that it understands before it processes them. Then the last part is the execution. So uh, it, uh, as you have seen, it only decodes or executes already decoded information. And of course, it decides whether to store them or display them. Like for example, if you type some character within your Word document, this, uh, it can, you can always display them within the computer or save them within the uh, hard disk. So that is what we refer to as the storing. Right, now, how does the communication or how does the CPU transfer this set of instructions from maybe main memory uh, to other parts of the CPU. It uses what we refer to as a bus. Yeah? So a bus is a set of wires that are actually inbuilt within the motherboard that carries the signals or these particular instructions from one part of the CPU uh, to the other. So the common language, we refer to it as the data bus. When you purchase a computer, it's very, very important to understand how, how wide or how narrow the data bus, data bus uh, is. So the wider the data bus, that means the, a lot of instructions can be transmitted. If the, uh, if the bus is narrower, then a few instructions can be transmitted. A good analogy or example is to look at a superhighway. A superhighway is very wide. Yeah, so it allows different vehicles to go to and fro. Yeah, and of course, if you have a narrow uh, road, 
then we can have very few vehicles going on. So we can look at vehicles as some set of data that is being transmitted. So data bus is very, very important. That's why we normally have the 32-bit bus address or, and also we have the 64-bit bus. So the higher the data bus or the wider the data bus, that means that particular computer can transfer a lot of data at the same uh, time. And of course, how it manages or captures how this transfer happens is based on the address bar, right? So this is just a holistic representation. This diagram shows a representation of what we have already discussed. So you can see the arrangement of the different compartments of the CPU. So at the center, we have the cache memory. We have seen what cache memory is all about. We also have the arithmetic logic unit at the center. We have the control unit. Uh, better still, you can see the red arrow. Yeah, the uh, red arrow shows how the, the data is being transmitted from one point to the other. Remember now, this is what we talked about as the data bus. Yeah. So we have the main memory and auxiliary storage. Auxiliary storage could be something like your flash disk or hard disk. And of course, we have the input-output devices. Now, take note of the cache memory. It's actually close to the CPU uh, compared to the main memory. That means the CPU can easily fetch data from the main memory, uh, from the cache memory, rather than going to the main memory. And also, the uh, interesting part is the control unit. As you can see, it manages the instructions from the input-output and also decides where to store them within is either to store them within the main memory and also whether to store them within the what uh, the secondary um, storage device that you have so ladies and gentlemen i hope that this will give you some uh, critical information of how a computer process uh, processor works or what we refer to as the cpu so remember the fetch execute cycle and ultimately how this particular arrangement uh, is actually executed all right should you find this particular information uh, uh, useful kindly proceed and subscribe and click on that particular uh, notification bell all right thanks